I was actually a STEM student in school. And when I got my scholarship to go to Oberlin College, I knew that I wanted to pursue the sciences because I wanted to be a pediatrician when I grew up. But what was so interesting about my sort of coming of age is that I also had uh, within my environment a household that was extremely active around social causes. My mom, Dr. Una Clark, was actually elected to the New York City Council when I was a young adult. And she was the first foreign-born woman from the city of New York to be elected to the New York City Council. And she's one of my role models. She's the woman from my home. And I grew up basically as her sidekick. And um, while in college, I actually began to take a shift. And that shift was towards public policy. There was a really activist climate on my campus. At that time, we were trying to get the administration of Oberlin College to divest from South Africa because South Africa was under an apartheid regime at the time. And that activism actually made me pivot to sort of the government, public policy side of my brain, knowing that we could impact people's lives and change the way that people view um, their role in society by engaging them through public policy. Fast forward, I come back to New York after I graduated from Oberlin College and that public policy work had me engage at the grassroots level first and foremost. So my first job was with Aunt Renee. Renee Williams. She ran a nonprofit organization in the district called the Erasmus Neighborhood Federation. And there I worked to help organize tenants in the community to make sure that their voices were heard, where their landlords were concerned and their concerns about healthy living environments. I worked with women who were starting businesses in their home, childcare businesses in their home, and trained them on how to make sure their homes were a safe space for children to be educated, to be nurtured. And from there, I just sort of navigated my way through various experiences in the public or quasi-public sector. I ultimately ended up being staffer to two state elected officials. One, was the Assemblywoman Barbara Clark of Queens. I was her executive assistant, and my job was to drive her from Queens, New York, to Albany, New York. And I worked in her Albany office, making sure whatever she wanted done uh, as part of what she had learned from her constituents were followed through in Albany. And whatever we did in Albany was then followed through in her Queens office. But being her driver, I got an opportunity to really speak with her, learn more about her thinking about what it was to be an assemblywoman, what her passion was and what drove her to want to represent this part of Queens. I also uh, was a, a staffer to State Senator Valmanette Montgomery. Now, Barbara Clark, unfortunately, is not with us any longer, but State Senator Valmanette Montgomery is still serving in the New York State Senate. And I worked in her district office where people would come in with their concerns from the local community in Brooklyn. And so I had these women as role models and uh, didn't realize it at the time. I knew I wanted to be of service. But then in the interim, my mom was elected to the New York City Council, being the first foreign born woman elected to the New York City Council. And during her tenure there, her service, she was term limited. And the community looked around and said, well, Yvette, you're always with your mom. You're always outspoken. You've been doing all this work in the community. Why don't you run? And so I took the chance. I ran. I won. We became the first ever mother-daughter succession in the history of the New York City Council and remain the only mother-daughter succession in the New York City Council in, in the history of the council to this very day. And from there... Uh, a rare opportunity came up, the retirement of the congressman that represented the district that I lived in. And uh, I could not let that opportunity go by. I knew that it was important that we have women's voices in Washington, D.C. I was the only woman at that time offering myself 
in public service for that particular position. I ran with all my gusto and was elected, was victorious. 